During the 19th and early 20th century, the long-necked giant dinosaurs called the sauropods were thought to be too heavy to live on land. They were commonly depicted as mainly aquatic. Most paleo arts of the time reconstructed them immersed in water. Looking at sauropod skulls, Giraffa Titan and Diplodocus here, we can see that their nasal openings are located at the top of their skulls. Having nostrils here would have been a very helpful adaptation for an animal that submerged the majority of its body underwater. Their long necks and high nostrils would have served as a snorkel. However, as we now know, sauropods didn't actually live underwater. Closer analysis since the 1970s have figured out that sauropods were primarily terrestrial animals. And just like their aquatic interpretation, the conception of sauropod nostrils being at the top of their heads might have also been incorrect after all. Most sauropods have nasal openings atop their heads. It's most evident in members of the clade Macronaria, which includes Giraffa Titan, Dreadnoughtus, Brachiosaurus, and other sauropods with raised and enlarged nasal openings, forming a crest on their heads. This skull shape led many to speculate that the nostrils were located high on the forehead, where the openings are, a curious facial anatomy unseen among all other terrestrial vertebrates. Following the more accurate terrestrial description of sauropods, this nostril position has lost its supposed anatomical purpose. A speculation reasons that, on land, having nostrils away from the snout reduces the risk of the animal from breathing in foliage debris as they are eating. Which is not a very convincing argument, since apart from the fact that breathing in leaf crumbs doesn't seem to be a hazard to most herbivores, no other animals that failed the same niche as the sauropods have evolved this same adaptation. Sauropod nostril placement on the forehead is useless and out of place. A 2001 study compared clues about soft tissue from dinosaur skulls to the anatomy of living animals to determine where dinosaur noses actually were. It had been figured out that the fleshy nostrils of dinosaurs, including sauropods, were located far forward in the face. The pattern of blood vessels present in the dinosaur skulls helped to confirm this nostril position. This implied that sauropods had soft tissue covering that extended from the nasal openings right down to the snout. So, just like virtually all reptiles and other non-avian dinosaurs, sauropods' nostrils were also located at the front of their face. However, it is still very difficult to determine how much soft tissue actually occupied a sauropod's face. Sauropod skull textures provide indications that it might have had a more generous amount of soft tissue covering its skull. Noticeable alterations in the head and face profile from the underlying skull is to be expected from the living animal. But, since sauropods would benefit from having light heads, they were less likely to have possessed excessively heavy facial integuments. So, conservative speculations that suggest a modest amount of skin covering just enough to bridge the nostrils to the nasal openings appear to be the most plausible. Reconstructing dinosaurs based on the skeleton alone, with no regards to the soft tissue whatsoever, more often than not, will result in incorrect depictions, both anatomically and behaviorally. Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, Argentinosaurus, and all other sauropods did not live underwater, and certainly did not breathe from nostrils atop their skulls.